place your tabletop patties evenly in your baking dish, just like that. Okay, perfect. You're gonna take your Mexican style cheese. Ooh. And as always, cheese measure with the heart. I always say my heart says more cheese, more better. Lots of cheese, spread it out. Just like that, get all of your hash browns covered in cheese. And then bacon. Pull it out. And take those strips. And we're just gonna evenly lay them across one final piece. And you're gonna take some Swiss cheese slices. Holy moly. And we're gonna go back in with the layers. Look at that, look at how perfect this is. Overlap them again. Does just. it have to be Swiss? So it doesn't have to be Swiss. I just think Swiss is perfect. And I think you should use Swiss. But you could use whatever, you could use cheddar. You could use, what else? Probably Munster would be really good. Munster, I haven't heard that in a while. Look at how perfect that is. Great. Look at that. And now I have five eggs here. They are pre-scrambled. But then we're gonna come in with some milk. You can use whatever, whole milk, 2%, 1%. Maybe not skim. Skim is not popular in this house. We're just gonna take a half a cup and add that to our mm. egg mixture. This is gonna make them nice and fluffy, right? Right. Then we're gonna take some pink Himalayan salt. The best kind. Give it a crack. Probably about one tablespoon of salt. Some paprika. You could use smoked as well. Mm. Probably about half a tablespoon of that. Half a tablespoon of black pepper. Perfect. And then garlic powder. You could also have add onion powder if you want. We just don't have any today, but onions I think would be very good in this recipe. Mix everything all up. Just like that. Take that egg mixture and pour it right on top. Whoa. Yep. All around. This is so smart. And this is just gonna act as almost like the sealant to the entire dish. We're making a casserole. For the final step, we just have more hash browns. More taters! More taters. We're just gonna line them just like we did on that first step. Hmm. Should you do a little more cheese on the top? Oh, I read you your mind. It. You knew it, always more cheese. This step is optional. More cheese, more better. It's though, not optional. Opinion. Let's be real. And add Perfect. Just a good sprinkle of that cheese. And this could also be cheddar. This could be mozzarella, whatever you're feeling. I just like the mix of the Mexican blend. And then we're gonna take this over to our oven. We're preheated to 350 degrees. Gently place her right in the oven and bake until golden brown. Oh yeah. Look at that cheesy, potatoey, like wow. And you say you're not a breakfast person. Do you smell that? Oh, we have to cut into this right now. Let's look, let's get a whole hash brown. I want this this center one. Oh. Do you hear that? I do. That's a good cheese crispiness. Okay. I want this center one. I'm one of those people that will Go for the center, no Go matter for what. the centerpiece, no matter what. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That sounds good. Let's see our cheese pool. Oh, that was not a good cheese pool, but this is like, it. that's it's so satisfying. satisfying. Look at those layers. Hey, Alyssa. Yeah? Alyssa, What's come that? here. Come try this. Oh my gosh, wait, what'd you make? I made hash brown casserole. Stop, you're the best. Careful, it's probably hot. It's a little hot. Yeah. She went for it. Mmm. Be honest, what would you rate it? Wait, oh me? Let it marinate. I'd say like a solid nine out of 10. All right, what would have made it a 10 out of 10? Chives. Chives. We have some in the fridge, I could have added them. All right, add chives next time. Add chives next time, but with chives a little sour lives. cream, dip it in sour cream, oof. We had I'm really good. Chives saves lives. I'm really good. That bubbling will go down, as we all know. Perfect. Take a stick of butter. Come right here. Our handy dandy slicer that everyone should have at this point. I think we've 
This is so efficient. Proven that it's the, look at that. Yeah, this should be a common household <sighs> item. We're not even selling this. We no. just, we're not. We're, we're so amazing. I bought this on Amazon, like you all can get it. And then just take your slices of butter right on top. Take your pink Himalayan salt. You can use whatever salt you want. This is just what we have on hand. Kosher salt, table salt, even sea salt would work. And you're gonna wanna give it a good coat so that salt bakes right into the potato skins. Perfect. And then just a little bit of cracked black pepper. Not pepper. Not too much of that pepper because we'll add more pepper in step two. Right, once everything's in there and those bubbles have settled a little bit, we're going to take it right over to the oven. Let's see if we can do this. You ready? Oh. Can we do it? This is talent. Don't drop the things. Hey, that, nice. was, that was pretty impressive, you have to admit. And pop it in. Okay. Take the 350, it looks like. 350 and bake for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right. Let's look at them. Oh, yeah. Look, they have soaked up almost all of wow. that blue moon. Look, now you can see the cuts on the top. Look at how good those look. And our salt has made the most delicious looking crust. I'm gonna take some bacon bits. Bacon. Look at that. And just sprinkle it all over. Look at that. These are all the essential food groups. We have potatoes, bacon, beer. Right. Yeah. This is everything you've ever dreamed of, right? Who wouldn't want this? And then we're adding even better cheese. Like and cheese. Let's everything go. right on top. And what do we say about cheese? Makes everything better. Makes everything better. More cheese, more better. <laughs> so measure with the heart. Look, can you see how it's just that, it, like the potatoes soaked up almost all of that liquid. Mm -hmm. so these potatoes are going to be entirely infused with beer. That's crazy. Beer potatoes. And we just have some smoked paprika for a little added flavor mm -hmm. right on top. Starting to look good. They smell Starting to look like a restaurant than baked they potato. Look. I know, twice baked potato. All right, we left that oven on, so now we're just gonna take these back to the oven. Hence the twice baked. Yeah. Back to the oven until that cheese is melted. Okay. Oh, that looks ah. so good. It's even better the second time. Look at that crispy cheese, that bacon bit. Which one? I think I want this one. Let's plate one. it up. Plate it up. Look at that. This beer actually smells so good. Look at that. I can hear the sizzle of the beer. They can't have a twice baked potato without two things. Most importantly, sour cream. Okay. I love sour cream on my twice baked potatoes so much that we're literally, we're almost Not much out. Left. There it is. Look at that. And then chives. Chives? I know you could cut them. I just rip it up. It does the same <laughs> thing. Just rip it up, put it right on. You should just bite it to chop them and then spit them back on the... <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you guys would like that very much, would you? I think you'd be very <laughs> upset with me for that. There, look how pretty it looks. And now I know I love baked potatoes, but I need our potato expert to come try it. SB, come here. I'm here. She's been waiting <laughs> She's for this. <laughs> Are okay. you excited? Yeah. Now these are our Blue Moon Twice Baked Potatoes. Okay. Oh my God, it's actually so Is good. Is it good? It's actually so good. Can taste? you taste the Blue Moon? Barely, it's like very subtle. Almost like a beer, like how beer cheese is like subtle with the beer. Uh-huh. <laughs> what think do you she rate likes it? it? 11 team. 11 team. 11 team. <laughs> I started saying 11 and I wanted it to be higher. So no changes. Uh-uh. <laughs> Great. All right, I have a whole bag of frozen tater tots here and I'm just gonna add half of them to the bottom of my crock pot. And then I have about one pound of partially cooked ground beef. I just cooked it up where you can still see that steam and I partially drained it. You don't want too much grease in there, but a little bit of grease adds some good flavor. So I left about two tablespoons of grease in there, but if you don't like that, Go ahead and just drain the whole thing. And then I have a little bit of Velveeta cheese here that I just cubed. This is about, I don't know, eight to 10 ounces of Velveeta cheese. And I just cubed it up 
so that none of it gets too stuck in one spot. This just helps it to spread easier, but you don't really have to do that if you don't want to. If you like a little bit more cheese, you can go ahead and get the 16 ounce block, but the eight ounce block works perfectly for us. And then I have about one cup of frozen onions here. They are pre-chopped. I'm just gonna add that whole thing in there. We got a few chunks because they were frozen in my, in my freezer, but don't worry, this is gonna get really hot and that's all just gonna break up. Don't worry about that. And then I have a little bit of garlic here. It's pre-minced. If you wanted to add whole cloves in there as well, you could. But I'm just going to add about two-ish tablespoons of that and go ahead and add a little bit of that juice in there for added flavor. Mix that around. You don't want any of it to just get stuck in one spot on your ground beef and anybody get a big old bite of garlic. You don't want to send anybody home with garlic breath. And then none of that ground beef was seasoned, so we're just gonna add a little bit of seasonings here. I have some salt, not too much salt. I don't like too much sodium. Maybe about, I don't know, half a teaspoon there. And then some black pepper. If you wanna get grated stuff that you grade yourself, that's fine too. We're just gonna dump this pre-stuff on here. Really rough, but then to really give this some good flavor, everyone loves some taco seasoning. This is my favorite brand. It is the lower sodium kind. And I just add a lot of that in there because this is going to season those tater tots. This is going to season that ground beef. So we're going to go ahead and add tons and tons of that in there. Now, I know some of you are gluten-free. They make a gluten-free kind of this. I didn't know this had gluten. Apparently it does. So get the gluten-free kind, extra spicy, mild, whatever you want works. And now look, we got all that seasoning in there and I'm just going to give it a rough mix. It's not going to mix up too well just because we do have lots of dry and frozen ingredients in here but that's all gonna cook down really really nicely and again don't worry about these chunks of onions when this gets hot those are all gonna break apart real nicely and it'll be perfect get that off your spoon there and then i still have some more of those frozen tater tots so dump the rest of those just right on top grab those stragglers that popped out over there and we're not gonna season those. And once all of your ingredients are mixed together, go ahead and take that lid and we are just gonna cook this on high for about two to three hours until everything frozen is thawed. All right, y'all, now that our tater tots are halfway cooked in here, we're gonna go ahead and add in some mild cheddar cheese. You could use the sharp stuff too. I'm just not a big fan of the sharp stuff. And now I like a lot of cheese, so I'm gonna go in with even more. We just had a little bit in one bag and some new bags here. Give that a spread. I don't wanna see any of those tater tots there. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I love cheese, y'all. If you don't like this much cheese, don't add this much, it's okay. I just love a good amount of cheese. And then to make it a little bit healthy, I'm just gonna go in with some parsley flakes because look at how much healthier it looks. Might not be healthy, but it looks healthy. You add something green and it looks healthy. Now I'm just gonna let this heat up for about, I don't know, 10, maybe only five minutes until that cheese is melty and we are all done. All right, y'all, it's done. <gasps> Look at that gooey, melty cheese we got going on in there. Oh, I gotta get some of this. Let's look. Let's see, let's get a good cheesy scoop right on that edge. Ooh, yeah, look at that. We got ourselves a tater tot casserole. I need to get myself a little bit more of that ground beef. Look at that. Look at how good that looks. Now come on over here, it's not finished yet. You can't have a tater tot casserole without a dollop of daisy. And then I got some green onions. I'm just using my kitchen scissors. I'm gonna cut that up. This is really just for a garnish. But look at it, now it looks healthy. That's what I always say, you guys. Add something green and then you got yourselves a healthy dish. Now let's get our taste tester in here. Hey Brady. Yeah baby. Come on in. Mm. You've been smelling it all day. Look what I got for you. Oh, you want a spoon or a fork? Mm, fork, I think. Do you have a spork? I don't, we I should get some sporks, sporks though. Sporks. All right, get a little sour cream, a little green onion. Mm, okay. Ooh, what is it? Is this like- Tater tot is casserole. Meat? Is that, what kind of meat is this? Ground beef. Oh, ground beef. Just some ground beef. It's probably very hot. You're notorious for burning your mouth. Please blow on it. Ready? Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. How is it? Oh my gosh, it's really good. It reminds me of uh, like the baked potato spuds you get from Yes, that's exactly what I was going for. What would you rate it? Hannah, 
You slayed. This is a 10. 10 out of 10. You heard it here. Try it. 10. One block of Philadelphia cream cheese. The whole block? Yep, the whole block. You don't have to cut it. It'll just melt down, smush it down on top of it. And then some chicken broth. Chicken broth. I use the less sodium, but if you really want to watch your sodium intake, I do recommend making your own broth at home. But I always say a little sodium never hurt anybody. And you might use the whole box. We're just looking to cover those potatoes as much as possible. So it depends on the size of the bag that you use. And it looks like we are gonna use the whole thing. A bag of diced white onions. You could use red as well. I just think the sweetness of a white onion tastes so good in some delicious potato soup. Get that whole bag in there. And then, what is potato soup without some cheese? Let's go. And you know what I say? More, more cheese, cheese, more, more better. better. <laughs> Look at that, we got the big bag today and I'm just putting probably about two and a half cups. We are gonna save a little bit of this cheese for the end, but we are gonna also add some bacon yes. bits. I love bacon. Tell you what, you put cheese and bacon on anything, it's gonna taste great. Right, that's what I say too. Spread it all around. And then just some fresh cracked black pepper. Now I recently have started using white pepper as well. I don't think it tastes any different, but I think it looks pretty. I don't really know the difference. Wait, white pepper? White pepper, white peppercorns. I think it's salt. No, white pepper, <laughs> white peppercorns. But we are gonna go in with a little bit of cracked salt as well. Is it cracked salt? Yeah, I'm cracking it. Okay, I don't like, know what that meant. Crack, 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 you know what I mean? Okay, grinding. Grinding the salt. But why is it cracked pepper and ground salt? I don't make the rules. I don't either, I just enforce them. And then we're just gonna give it a little bit of a mix if we can. But as, as this all starts to melt down, we'll give it another mix. This makes enough for about 12 people Whoa. to have potato soup. Yeah, this is great for big families, for a potluck. Or one or person for 12 Just one person days. for 12 days, exactly, <laughs> you read my mind. Go ahead, take your lid and put it on. And we just have it cooking on high for probably about four hours. Look. Ooh. How delicious that, oh my, like this smells, that bacon. Oh, it smells so good. Now, you know what I always say, more cheese, more, more better. better. So we gotta garnish it with just a little bit of shredded cheese on top. Oh yeah. Not really necessary, but it looks pretty. And more cheese, more better always. And then my favorite, some green onions. You know, you can pre-chop these. I know it's weird. I just take some scissors and I bunch them up and I'm just gonna cut them right on top. Super huh. rough Never seen it done that way, that's so simple. This is what my mom always did, it's just easier. Taking a knife to these is kind of, it's more difficult. I think scissors work just the same. Perfect. And we're gonna get a good spoonful. Oh yeah. Oh, look at those potato chunks in there. Holy. That looks so good. And now let's get our taste tester in here. Hey, Anthony, come That's here. So finished? He's yes. a taste tester today. He's that been looks... smelling the crock pot for like the last four hours, wondering when it's gonna be done. <laughs> that looks amazing. Blow on it, oh it's a little gosh. bit hot. Let's get oh you a gosh. spoon. Is this a new favorite? I, it might be, I don't know. I think it's gonna be potato my soup. favorite. Potato soup's one of my favorites. Potatoes and cheese, how can you go wrong? All right. It's probably really hot. <laughs> I mean, no, it's really good. Really? It's really good. What do yeah. you rate it? Um, always 10 out of 10. No, honestly, this is one of the best that I've had. Really? Yes. 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 10 out of 10, baby. 10 out of 10. Mm. 